Hi, this video is a problem solving example for 1D kinematics. So this is one of your homework questions. I will um, I'll demonstrate solving this problem just uh, from the beginning to the end. Uh, when you work on the question, do look at the hints and try working it out for yourself um, after having watched this video. Okay, so the question says, a diver bounces straight up from a diving board, avoiding the diving board on the way down, and falls feet first into a pool. She starts with a velocity of some number of meters per second. By the way, your number will be different, it's randomized. And her takeoff point is some number meter above the pool. Note you so she equals 9.8 meter per second squared throughout and report all answers to two significant digits. Okay, so that's the setup, and the question actually asks, you know, what's the highest point, how long is she in the air, and so on. Um, but from the information given in the problem itself, uh, I can start drawing diagram. And I highly recommend that you get into habit of, as you are reading the question, just diagramming the information that's been given by the question. It's a way to kind of recap for yourself what information is given and if you are missing anything. It's a kind of an intuition you have to develop, so it takes practice. All right, so I have a diving board here. The drawing doesn't need to be very artistic and mine are not. And our diver is going to jump upward with some speed V0. And um, I was given the number of 3.75 meters per second. And you have the description of Diver's trajectory. She moves straight up and then straight down, missing the diving board and then striking the water. And I was given the distance between the diving board and the water. Let me call that height, H, of 1.8 meters. Oh, and let me highlight this as a reminder. G equals 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, so once you have this all diagrammed out, what I would recommend is pause for a bit, look at the information that's given to you, and see if uh, um, just feel your way <laughs> to if it feels like you are given complete set of information. If you knew that someone was jumping straight up at some speed, does it feel like you have all the information you need to know how high the person will go? Maybe. Um, and do you feel like you have all the information you need for how long the person will be in the air before striking the water surface? And how fast she'll be going? When you're starting out, um, you might not quite have that feeling yet. Uh, maybe, I think a part A is a little bit easier because you know you know the, how fast something is going, uh, how high it reaches, it's probably one-to-one -one relationship. You don't have any other variable you need to worry about. So I think that is more doable. Um, the rest, uh, until you have done some kinematics problems, it can be hard to know when you have complete set of information. But I recommend that you get into this practice because the first step in solving problems is first feeling like you can solve them, uh, knowing in your heart that you have information to solve them. So uh, let's uh, go right through here. Um, we are looking for the highest point. Mm. So let me walk you down a few false steps first. So you look at the highest point, so you might be thinking, oh, position. So which of my kinematics equations involve position? Let me write those down. I have this one, one that says height or y position is equal to minus one half gt squared plus initial velocity y times t plus initial height. Why not? Well, y, zero. And before you go too far with this step, you have to do a little self-check um, to make sure that you don't waste any time. It's the check of, do I have all the information I need? 
do I have initial y position? Oh, I think I do. Um, oh, I need to decide on where I'm going to say y is equal to zero. I'm going to say my y is equal to zero at the water surface. You don't have to, but that choice seems natural to me here. So my initial height is going to be h. I have that. I have my initial velocity. Uh, I'm going to call it v0. I have g. And I'm looking for the height or the y position at the highest point. So I don't actually know why. And the reason we are going through this exercise to see if we know every symbol here is because of this. This is a general rule in algebra. You can only solve for as many unknowns as there are equations. Um, I hope that sounds familiar. I don't know where I learned it, but I learned it in one of my math classes, probably algebra. So, because we already have one unknown here, that means we have to know every other variable. So, we know y0, we know v0, we know g, all those are fine. But here's your trouble. I don't know time t. So, if you're trying to use this equation to uh, solve this problem um, in one shot, um, you can't. You have too many unknowns. All right. <laughs> So you have two options here, um, and you can go either way. For those of you who might be more experienced in problem solving, you might look through your kinematic applications and realize you can use the V squared formula. If you realize that, great, do it. <laughs> um, you'll do fine. Uh, let me go the other way. Uh, I'm going to actually continue using this uh, equation that I picked first because it's a good equation, it's useful in a lot of circumstances and I have a feeling I'm going to be using it for part B. Um, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead try to find T. So the only problem with this approach here is that we don't have as many equations as we have unknowns. So I need one more equation. Uh, with, that doesn't <laughs> introduce any more unknown to bring the balance to my number of equations and number of unknowns. So I'm going to keep it this equation. Let me call it equation one. So I have some way to refer to it. And um, I go through the rest of the kinematics equations in my head, or I might have a uh, well, in my head. So I'm looking for something that involves time. That's not the v-squared formula. It explicitly doesn't have time. Um, but I have other equations that involve velocity. So this is the equation that involves velocity. The velocity v is equal to initial velocity and plus acceleration times time. That's why I'm bringing it up. Here the acceleration is minus g, so minus gt. All right, this looks promising. I don't have any new unknowns because the v0 here is the same v0, g here is the same g I was using before, and time, that's unknown, but it's the same unknown. Uh, here's a problem. What's a v? Because that's different from initial velocity v0. So you need to know the velocity at the highest point. And this is the place where I see many students get stuck. And this is the place where the practice of diagramming the situation and developing a physical intuition will help you long term uh, now and down the road. Because if you think about this situation carefully, you actually know this information. Um, you might remember it from your calculus class too. So what I like to do is I like to visualize. I like to imagine actually watching a diver who jumps up, who reaches the highest point, and then drops down. At the highest point, how quickly is the diver moving? And after you think about it for a while, I hope you realize at the highest point, 
the diver isn't moving. It's the point where the diver is neither moving up nor moving down. So you know this answer already. It's zero. And in a way, the problem was giving you that information by saying the word highest point. But to make use of that information, you have to have a good mental picture of the situation. So okay, we have two equations and only two unknowns, the time t and the position y. So uh, now the rest is a matter of algebra. Um, so let me do that. I'm going to solve equation 2 for time. That'll get you t is equal to v0 minus v, but that was 0, divided by g. So v0 divided by g. And uh, so this is the technique that you remember, hopefully, as a substitution. Um, that's why I solved for t. That gives me a tool that I can use to get rid of t's in the other equation. So we plug this into 1. That gives me this a single equation. y is equal to minus 1 half g v0 over g squared plus v0 times v0 over g plus h, which has no unknowns other than y. So, oh, so we have solved for y. So simplifying a little bit here, the first and the second terms get combined to get to v0 squared over 2g plus and the third term, h. All right, I think this is as simple as I can get. So now I'm ready to plug in the numbers. The v0 is 3.75, g is 9.8, and h is 1.8 and as a double check you should work out the units and make sure that you get a unit of meter so let me do that on the side with the calculator and I get the answer of 2.52 meters but if you plug this in uh, you will find that you uh, the system says it's wrong that's because uh, you need to read the question carefully above the board. So they don't want the y position. For one, they don't know where I said y equals zero. So since I know the board is at 1.8 meters above, now I had to subtract it out of here, 2.52, to get the actual answer that they're looking for. So let me do that. And the answer to part A is 2.52 minus 1.8, or 0.8. 72 meters. So that's how high above the board the diver reaches. All right, part B. How long a time are her feet in the air? Okay, that feels like it's something I can answer with one of the equations I've had before. Um, in fact, going back to equation one, uh, so we are looking for time, so here it's okay that time is unknown, since I'm looking for it. And how long a time are her feet in the air? Let me rephrase that a little bit. So rephrasing, what they are really asking is, at what time does her feet hit the water? Oh wait, not does, do her feet hit the water? Does that rephrasing sound right? Okay, that makes it easier to um, say what I want to say about why. Not why why, but the letter why. <laughs> so at the time when her feet hit the water, what is the value of y? I said y equals zero here. So y is zero when her feet hit the water. Okay, then I know the value of y. It looks like equation 1 will just work fine. Uh, let me write down the rewritten version of equation 1 for solving part b. So let me call this 1b. 0 is equal to minus 1 half gt squared plus v naught t plus, I'm going to plug in the symbols I'm going to be using, h. All right. 
Um, T is the unknown, uh, I'm gonna have to use quadratic formula. Many times in constant acceleration kinematics problems, sometimes it turns out that you have to use quadratic formula. I try to avoid it as much as possible, but sometimes you just have to. So let me do that. Hopefully you have it all memorized. So um, this is already in that form of ABC. So let me just uh, write that out. So according to quadratic formula, T is equal to minus b, so that's minus v0 plus minus square root of b squared, so that's v0 squared minus 4 times a, capital A, so that's the coefficient minus 1 half gt. So uh, let me use that minus to cancel out this minus, so minus g over 2, that's a, quote unquote times c, that's the constant h. So that's under the square root, divided by 2a. So it's uh, minus 1 half g times 2, so minus g. All right, you can simplify it a little bit, but not too much. That's equal to v naught over g. And if I'm being picky, minus plus square root of v naught squared over g squared plus, um, let's see, 2 cancels out 1 factor from 4, 1 factor of g cancels out 2. So it should be 2h over g square rooted. All right, as I said, um, doesn't simplify that much. So you have to plug in the numbers. Let me do that off on the side with the calculator. Oh, you get two answers, right? Um, so with the minus sign, you get uh, minus 0 0.33 seconds. And with the plus sign, you get plus 1.10 seconds. And here it's probably clear enough that the answer you should pick is the plus 1.13 seconds. Because the minus sign, it it's unclear what that even means. <laughs> but you should get into a habit of kind of trying to make a sense of even the answers that you are going to be discarding. And this is what that uh, negative answer means. So this equation that we used, equation one, it uh, covers beyond the trajectories we are considering. So we are right now only considering from t equals zero going up, then down. But um, it actually describes the motion for all time. So you have this uh, hypothetical part of the trajectory where the diver comes out of the water at some speed, goes up, and at time equals zero, reaches this, this spot. And what that minus 0 0.33 seconds reflects is this moment in time here the hypothetical moment in time when the diver could have come out of water uh, with enough speed so that she reaches this uh, point on the diving board that time equals zero and she continues the rest of the actual track. And you know, all that's a hypothetical, it didn't actually happen. So the correct answer is 1.10 second for part B. All right, let me clear some of the board space for part C. What is her velocity when her feet hit the water? What is her velocity? Uh, it feels like this equation two is still relevant for that question. So we are looking for velocity, good. We don't know that. <laughs> um, v naught, we know. Minus g, we know. And time. Oh, that was part b. So we have that answer right here. We can plug that in and we can get an answer. So let's do that. V is equal to V naught minus G times the time. This time I'll just write out the numbers. 1.10 seconds is equal to, let me plug in the numbers in the calculator. So it's uh, minus 7.03 and it should be meters per second. You should work out the units for yourself, make sure you didn't make a unit mistake. And uh, it says one decimal place, so equal to minus 7.0 meters per second. 
Why is it negative? Oh, right. Um, upward direction is positive. Um, so when the diver hits the water, she's going downward. So her velocity should be negative. Now, there is a bit of an ambiguity here. Um, does the system want you to answer a negative answer or a positive answer? So this is where you read it carefully. It says velocity. So I am going to assume that they wanted me to indicate direction along with the speed. If they wanted a positive answer, then um, they would have said the speed. The ambiguity here is that, um, what if you defined it downward as positive? Because <laughs> nowhere in the question is specified. But uh, upward as being positive is such a common situation that's what it normally would be. Um, so I would try plugging in minus 7 uh, meters per second first. And here I tried it, it turns out to be correct. <laughs> now, if it isn't, um, correct then to get the correct answer you should try plus seven and I would actually report it as an errata because um, something like minus 7.0 meters per second is not accepted as correct then there's uh, enough of a room for misunderstanding and ambiguity here that the question should be corrected all right so that's a part C and I guess that's everything so this was a long problem um, Hopefully you got something out of it and uh, try your hand at problem solving on the remainder of the homework and uh, email me if there are any questions. Until next time, bye.